Welcome once more to the hallowed halls of our grand library. Today our tale takes us into the depths of history, where we shall uncover the secrets of the lush jungle known as Feralus. Located in the southern regions of Kalimdor, Feralus stands in stark contrast to its desolate neighbours to the north, south and the east, boasting a lush jungle landscape, encompassing a vast rainforest, colossal ancient trees span from Thousand Needles to the western coastline, and stretch from Desolus in the north to the barren mountains bordering Silithus. Travellers passing through this jungle recount experiences within the ancient ruins of Dire Moor, share tales of encounters with the woodpore gnolls and ogres, and recount the lingering presence of the Naga and the Silithid. Fortunately, we've compiled these accounts to delve into the rich history of this perilous jungle territory. The ancient history of Feralus stretches back to a time before the Great Sundering of Azeroth, more than 10,000 years ago. In tales as old as the existence of life on Azeroth itself, the story of Feralus begins with Dire Maul and the magnificent city it once housed. The Night Elf Highborn Society constructed Aldrathalas, an ancient city situated in the southwestern expanses of the ancient Night Elf Empire and serving as one of Queen Ajara's highborn capitals. Nestled within Eldrathalas resided the Shendrala, a secretive highborn society labelled as those who remain hidden. While many highborn resided in Zinashari, Eldrathalas housed certain nobles who chose to live outside the capital city for various political and personal reasons. The Shendrala were the most revered arcanists of Queen Azara, entrusted with safeguarding her most valuable tomes and processing her crucial demands often in secrecy. Under the leadership of Prince Tortheldrin, the Shendrala established the Grand City in the misty heart of Kalimdor's southern jungles. It was within this city that one of the powerful highborn Shendrala members, Millicent Serene, accomplished her most significant feat, the creation of the Fruit of Fertility. Crafted millennia ago, this magical vine was cultivated by Millicent using a specially prepared moonwell. The exotic and vibrant vine was infused with protective and nurturing properties, fostering the flourishing of all within the city from its position in the shrine of Eldrathar. One fateful day, Queen Ajara received a proposal from her most trusted advisor, Counselor Xavius. He suggested harnessing the power of the Well of Eternity to purify and protect the world. However, their ambitious dabbling in formidable magic didn't go unnoticed. Sargeras, the Dark Titan, took an interest. Seeking to unleash his Burning Legion upon Azeroth, he ensnared Xavius under his sway, and subsequently a significant number of the Highborn, including Queen Ajara herself. Enticed by Sargeras, Queen Ajara communicated her desire to cleanse the world of the lesser races. This initiated the first invasion of Azeroth by the Burning Legion, marking the inception of the War of the Ancients. Throughout this devastating conflict, the Shendrala valiantly defended their city, aided by the legendary Ancient Goldrin, who was said to have come to their aid against the Burning Legion. As Malfurion Stormrage made his final assault against Queen Ajara's forces, he utilised the power of the Dragon Soul to disrupt the carefully constructed spellwork of the Highborn. This action severed the connection between the Legion and Azeroth, causing an unstable vortex within the well's depths. The ensuing explosion rocked the temple, triggering cataclysmic events that sundered the world. The devastating blast tore through the tortured earth, collapsing the Well of Eternity upon itself. The aftermath of this was of course catastrophic. The implosion of the well caused massive quakes and left a vast wound in the earth, which meant the seas rushed in to fill the void. Nearly 80% of Kalimdor's landmass was shattered, leaving only scattered continents around the raging sea, forever altering the world's landscape. During the event of the Great Sundering, Eldrathalas narrowly avoided obliteration thanks to the relentless efforts of Torthaldrin and his devoted followers. Together they wielded a formidable spell that shielded the city from the catastrophic forces unleashed by the Sundering. Yet the survival of their city came with an unexpected price. Following the Sundering, they discovered the Well of Eternity had been consumed, severely diminishing their source of power. The loss of this font of energy led to a considerable decline in their immortality. Consequently, the Shendrala slipped into a deep slumber and languished in their secluded sanctuary for centuries. Torthaldrin, seeking to revitalise his people, devised a cunning plan. He erected pylons in the western halls of Aldrathalos to create a prison behind a formidable force field. This prison would hold a demon named Imulthar. 
Secretly summoning and binding this terrifying creature, Torthaldrin extracted its power to energise his followers. Initially met with scepticism, objections quickly dissipated as the Shendralar experienced the dark but addictive and invigorating energies of Ilmothar, far surpassing the well's offerings. The siphoned energy sustained their magic, fueling their insatiable thirst for power. However, if Ilmothar had broken free, it would have meant utter destruction for Eldrathalos. Isolated from the other night elves, the Shendralar's actions remained unnoticed. Over time, maintaining Ilmothar's imprisonment and supporting life within Eldrathalos became increasingly burdensome. The cost exceeded the benefits, shifting from gain to loss. Torthaldrin's once successful strategy began to unravel rapidly, leaving the Shendralar bereft of Imolthar's magic. Their immortality was lost once more, and addiction to the demon's potent energies grew desperate. In a desperate bid to regain power, Torthaldrin and his followers resorted to treachery, murdering their fellow highborn. The spirits of these slain now haunt the corridors and courtyards of the ancient ruins. The malevolent plan succeeded in thinning the population, allowing the remaining elves to tap into Imolthar's power indefinitely. With their numbers reduced, Torthaldrin and his loyalists abandoned much of the once majestic city, and of course Eldrathalos fell into a state of desolation and darkness. Before long, creatures from the nearby jungles laid claim to the decaying elven refuge, moving in to fill the void left by the Shendralar. The tales of Feralus seem to now enter a period of tranquility, an illusion masking a different reality. Amidst the nearly deserted city of Eldrathalos, succumbing to the encroaching jungles, an ominous force gathered strength within its forsaken walls. When the Horde first arrived in Azeroth, they brought with them the brutish ogres as allies. These clans fought alongside the Horde in the initial wars, but after the Second War, the ogres scattered across the land. One such clan, the Gorduni, led by their powerful chieftain Ulrock, titled King Gordok, settled in Feralus. Some made the ruins of Ilsidian and the northern footholds of Camp Mohachi their homes, while others inhabited the ancient ruins of Eldrathalos, reshaping it into a fearsome fortress known today as the Dire Maul. This ogre presence defiled the once pristine land of Feralus. Left relatively unchecked, the Gorduni began to consolidate their might, expanding their dominion across the land. An unmistakable demonstration of their newfound power lay in their utilisation of Dire Maul. They hosted gladiatorial tournaments within the ancient walls for the Crimson Ring, an underground network orchestrating lethal combat contests. These violent spectacles of the Crimson Ring drew diverse audiences, from gamblers to aristocrats and common folk, all eager to wager on the surviving champions. The ring itself comprised a range of individuals, from deceivers, swindlers, entrepreneurs, nobles and peasants. The performers were a motley crew, gladiator slaves, captives, criminals and willing free warriors testing their prowess within the ring. Despite the ring's secrecy, some victorious gladiators emerged from the tournaments carrying tales far beyond the bounds of its clandestine domain. Anticipation ripples across the realms of Azeroth for a tale woven far and wide. Among the victors of a Crimson Ring tournament stand the Night Elf Druid, Brawl Bear Mantle, the Blood Elf, Valeria Sanguinar, and the renowned Logosh, known to many as the esteemed High King of the Alliance and the former ruler of Stormwind, Varian Rin. However, the intricate narratives of these three gladiators shall remain veiled for now, tucked away for another telling. Let us redirect our attention to the Gorduni clan and the dense foliage of Feralus. Deep within the verdant southern woodlands of Feralus, ogre raiding parties pillaged settlements, villages and wayland travellers, while the wilderness itself bore the taint of corruption. As skirmishes erupted throughout the region, the Horde learned that the root of these troubles lay within Dire Maul. The Gorduni ogres had become increasingly audacious. Responding to this growing threat, Belgrom Rockmall in Orgrimmar issued a call to adventurers, urging them to aid the Horde forces in their struggle against the Gorduni. The Horde dispatched troops into the ruins of Dire Maul to confront the Gorduni ogres, yet upon their arrival they uncovered a different source of corruption the lingering presence of the Shendral Ar. Within Dire Maul's confines, the Horde discovered the demonic presence of Imolthar, a wellspring that the Shendral Ar had been feeding off for ages. 
Intent on purifying Feralus, the Horde managed to banish Yamothar to the Twisting Nether, thereby diminishing the Shendralar's power and enabling them to cleanse the lands of the Ancient Elves. With this, the Horde also vanquished the Prince, sealing the Shendralar's Night Elves' final fate. Continuing their advance through Diamol's wings, the Horde encountered other corrupted entities like the Satyr, Alzin in the Wild Shaper. Stories whispered that Alzin was a skilled arcane illusionist and a student of the Satyr Lord, Xavius. After the Battle of Mount Hygel, Alzin travelled south to Feralus, seeking to spread corruption. Using the power of the Highborn Shrine of Eldrathar and the Fruit of Fertility, Alzin manipulated illusions gaining control over nature's guardians. Adventurers rose to stop this satyr's malevolence, ending the Wild Shaper's hold on the nature within Dire Maul. Their ultimate purpose still lay ahead, the slaying of the Gorduni leader, King Gordok. It was revealed that the Gordok's descent into madness stemmed from the nightmarish whispers emanating from the Emerald Dream Portal near the Dream Bow, north of Dire Maul. Plagued by these whispers, Gordok ordered his clan to slaughter all in their path. The Horde wanted to halt this tyrannical rule, leading to a gruelling battle that ended in the death of the King Gordok, ruler of the Gorduni clan. Beyond the boundaries of the Maul, travellers from Feathermoon Stronghold along the coast and Camp Mohachi in the east found themselves contending with the region's formidable and disruptive wildlife, including yetis, harpies and gnolls. Among the most disruptive adversaries in the jungles of Feralus are the Silithid, created from the Karaji by the old god Cthun. These insectoid entities inhabit the writhing deep. Reports concerning the deep vary. Some adventurers speak of rescuing hostages from its depths, while others recount tales of ceaselessly battling these insectoid creatures for reasons unknown. However, one thing is certain, this is not the most hospitable place to journey within Azeroth. Our attention now returns to one of the entrances to the Emerald Dream. Nestled within the Dream Bow, an imposing tree situated on a small island amidst Jademire Lake in northern Feralus. The corruption emanating from the Emerald Dream was just the tip of the iceberg, leading to a larger issue involving the emergence of the Four Dragons of the Nightmare. Ysera's most trusted lieutenants were trained by a malevolent force within the Emerald Dream. These wayward sentinels traversed the great trees into Azeroth, with the aim of sowing madness and terror across the mortal realms. The destinies of these dragons will unfold after the Cataclysm, a narrative we shall explore in greater detail later within this very tale. During that same year, the 25th year following the Dark Portal's opening, Feralus encountered an invasion by the armies of Cthune, as part of the Anchorage War. These forces were swiftly repelled back to the city walls and ultimately vanquished by the unprecedented joint forces of the Alliance and the Horde known as the Might of Kalimdor. Despite adventurers successfully defeating Cthun, the leader of the Insectoids, some still report the lingering presence of Silithid in the Feralus region even after all these years. 27 years after the Dark Portal, Feralus grappled with the ongoing plight of the Dragons of the Nightmare. Isandra had redeemed herself and returned to her original purpose. Among the dragons, Emerys and Lathon had already met their demise. Tyrande made an attempt to purify Emerys using the power of a loon, however the dragon was so deeply corrupted that no healing was possible, resulting in her disintegration. When Isera was imprisoned within the Eye, an area in the Emerald's Dream, Malfurion Stormrage and Isera's consort, Aranicus, tried to free her. However, Lathon ambushed them endeavouring to corrupt Aranicus. Lethon prophesied about a future where the barriers of the Nightmare would collapse, allowing them to roam Azeroth's skies unhindered. To stop him, Aranicus shifted them both into the unstable border between the Emerald Dream and Azeroth. Despite Lethon's attempts to draw power from the Nightmare, the chaotic energies of the two realms tore him apart. This event left only one of the Nightmarish dragons, Tira. Eventually, Isandra herself, assisted by Azeroth's heroes, slew Tarar. With this daunting task completed, Isandra remained as the last of the former dragons of Nightmare. Although she was saved from the Nightmare, she expressed that she could never return to the Green Dragonflight. She hoped to live a modest life, concealed among mortals of Azeroth one day, a hope we would later come to realise was never going to be a possibility. After Deathwing the Destroyer's awakening and the subsequent cataclysm that followed in the year of 28 after the Dark Portal, both the Alliance and the Horde heightened their presence in Feralus. Due to the intensification of the war against Deathwing 
and the ongoing Alliance Horde conflict. Devastating floods after the Cataclysm led to the destruction of the Alliance strongholds Thalonar and Feathermoon Stronghold, leaving their inhabitants vulnerable to attacks by the Grim Totem tribe and the Naga, respectively. In response to these threats, two new settlements were established to counter the dangers. Simultaneously, the Horde also faced challenges, as refugees from the decimated Torrent settlements in Thousand Needles sought refuge. Furthermore, the resurgent Gorduni clan, growing in strength, spread magical corruption throughout the lands of Feralus. The Horde received support from the Stonewall clan ogres, led by Orhan Ogreblade to counter the Gorduni threat. Investigations revealed that the Gorduni were being taught magic by Cho'Gall, a deranged ogre warlock affiliated with the Twilight's Hammer cult. Cho'Gall bestowed power upon the Gorduni ogres in recognition of their allegiance and service to the Twilight's Hammer clan. Orhan, along with her ogres, and Sylvia with her sentinels, thwarted Cho'Gall's plans and prevented further chaos. Cho'Gall faced this resistance and was expelled from the lands. Our narrative of Feralus now shifts its focus to the exploits of a young Lakeshire resident named Aramar Thorn. His name shortened to Aram. Aram was born to Graydon Thorn and Sayer Northbrook in Lakeshire. On his sixth birthday, his father abruptly left the family, leaving Aram initially in disbelief. It took two years for Aram to acknowledge the harsh truth, fostering a lasting resentment towards his absent father. Six years post his father's departure, and a month following his twelfth birthday, Graydon reappeared. With his mother's blessing, Graydon took Aram and embarked on a year-long expedition across Azeroth aboard his vessel, the Wave Strider. But during this time, Aram was troubled by dreams guided by the voice of the light. Subsequently, the Wave Strider fell victim to a pirate attack. In the ensuing chaos, Aram narrowly escaped, and he was entrusted with an unusual compass by his father, emphasising its significance. Placing Aram under the guardianship of Mikasa Flintwell, Graydon's sudden disappearance and the presumed loss of the crew compelled Aram and Mikasa to rely on each other as they washed up in the jungles of Feralus. Aram then embraced the value of life and formed unlikely bonds with Murky, a murloc, and Thallus Grey Oak, a night elf druid. Over time, Aram and Mikasa recognised each other as kindred spirits, setting aside their differences to survive the perils of Feralus. Meanwhile, Aram found himself pursued by the Hidden, an organisation linked to the Burning Legion. Led by Captain Malice, actually Silver Lane Thorn, Graydon's brother and Aram's uncle, the Hidden aimed to retrieve the magical compass once protected by Graydon and now in Aram's possession. In Feralus, the Hidden captured Murky, coercing Aram to surrender the compass in exchange for the Murloc's safety. However, this exchange was disrupted by the Gorduni Ogres. Led by Wordok, they seized Aram and Thallis, transporting them to Diamol for gladiatorial combat under King Gordok's amusement. Amidst the chaos of the arena within Diamol, the Hidden arrived in pursuit of Aram and the compass. As the Hidden clashed with the Ogres and the Gordok, Aram managed to flee atop the Wyvern with Mikasa's aid. Tragically, Thallus sacrificed himself to shield Aram from a crossbow bolt. Malus, after defeating the current King Gordok, became leader of the Gorduni clan and ordered them to track down Aram. High above the Thousand Needles border, Aram discovered the compass pointing toward a buried shard, unknown to him as a fragment of a sword. Aram, alongside Mikasa, Hackle, and Murky, planned their journey to Gadgetzan, fulfilling Thallus' final wish and uncovering the mystery surrounding the compass and the guiding light, all the while evading the persistent pursuit of the Hidden. In the midst of the relentless pursuit of Aram and the Compass, a significant portion of Feralus suffered extreme deforestization at the hands of the Gorduni. This led to the displacement of the Feral Scar Yetis and the Woodpaw Knolls, pushing them further eastward and into confrontations with one another. Eventually, the Yetis and the Knolls forged an alliance to combat the Ogres. As tensions escalated, the Ogres were compelled to withdraw back into the Dire Mall, and the demise of Malus later followed. His end was met by the combined efforts of Mikasa and Aram some time later. Despite the Alliance and Horde establishing strongholds in Feralus, the region remains fiercely wild and untamed. The Horde's influence persists primarily through Camp Mohachi, which faces relentless assaults from the Gorduni, who are controlling strategic sections of the jungle. With ongoing attacks on Mohachi and Camp Ataya by Ogres and Woodpaw Knolls, the Horde Council responded by dispatching Belgrom Rockmall to address these urgent pleas for aid. While adventurers aided Belgrom in reducing the enemy forces, the situation 
remained dire. To fortify the camps, Belgron proposed the establishment of a new Horde outpost, Camp Rockmore. Amidst the ongoing chaos involving Knolls, Yeti, Silithid and the Horde, the Gorduni still resiliently attempted to expand their territories, intensifying conflicts along the jungle's contested borders and spoiling the lands they seized from others. As the sun sets upon the tales woven within the jungles of Feralus and the haunted halls of Dire Maul, emotions linger like whispers carried by the wind. The echoes of valour, sacrifice and unlikely bonds forged in the fires of adversity resonate through the dense foliage and the ancient ruins. As the tales of Feralus and Dire Maul draw to a close, their essence remains etched into the hearts and memories of those who witnessed the unfolding saga. They stand as a testament to the enduring spirit, the unwavering resolve to overcome darkness and the timeless power of unity and friendship in the most challenging of times.